Okay, sige. Good morning and welcome to our uh, stream. Alright, so since we don't have a strong internet connection to meet in Google Meet, I just recorded the the video lecture <clears throat> regarding the our topic on forces that influence learning motor skills. So what are this no, topic all about? Forces influencing learning motor skills. Basically, uh, this the 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 topics the subtopics that I'm going to present to you are not only does not only focus on motor skills but learning in general. Okay, so when we say forces, uh, uh, the term for forces are factors no? that influence how we learn. Okay, so not all people learn the same phase. Alam natin yan, no? in the in <clears throat> One of the the theories in learning is that uh, all uh, all people all all learners undergo a specific phase of learning, pero uh, not all uh, do not all are in the same speed or in the same phase as the others. So lahat tayo, pwede tayong matuto, pero hindi lahat pareho ng ng bilis sa pagkatuto okay so ano ba yung mga mga <coughs> bagay-bagay na nakaka-influence or nakaka-epekto sa pagkatuto ng ng ating learner okay in this case specific tayo with the motor skill so paano ba natututo at ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay na nakaka-epekto sa pagkatuto ng specific skill ng isang bata okay so in this presentation uh, we will be talking about uh, the four, four, ba? four factors that influence the uh, learning of a specific motor skill. So, the first one, we have readiness. Okay, gano ba ready yung tao? Motivation. Talks about the attitude towards learning. Reinforcement. Okay, yung uh, supporting factors. And, of course the individual differences okay the individual differences all right now let's talk about readiness um the first factor that we that influence our way or our our no, yeah right way of learning is readiness no in in facilitating learning i could still remember my subject way back in our fasi before we call this one as Thorndike's law of readiness so, readiness can be defined in terms of the following. We have physiological and we have psychological readiness. When we talk about physiological readiness, it has something to do with our body. Is our body ready to learn a specific move? Okay? So, handa ba ang katawan natin or fitted na ba yung katawan natin para matuto ng isang move na yan? Okay? And psychological has something to do with how ready is our mind, our cognitive, our cognition to do a specific movement. Okay? So, <clears throat> to further explain this, let's talk about physiological uh, physiological factor. Alright, so physiological readiness is the development of necessary strength flexibility and endurance as well as development of the various organ system to such degree that learners can control their bodies in physical activity from the word itself no physio physiology um in putting this in putting this in a a sport uh, to, a learning perspective okay it's in terms of of motor learning um a, spe a specific individual has to be ready physiology okay physiologically uh, physiologically ready big sabihin dapat ready yung body niya para matuto okay say for example um, a simple movement such as running okay tak magtakbo a uh, uh, infant ha has to have okay has to learn a a necessary skill in order for 
a, a infant or a toddler to run. So, paano yun siya? First, of course, pag pinanganak ka, yung infant, hindi pa siya, dap, hindi pa siya nakakagalaw-galaw. Okay? Kasi nakahiga lang siya. Until such time that the bones are already strong enough para magbaligtad at mag-support siya through hand. And then, from, 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 from lying down, the facing, again, mag-roll mag na siya, kasi medyo na, mayroon sa instinct niya na okay na ang katawan niya, okay, and then magtukod na siya using the hands, and then, the, the infant will soon learn how to crawl, kamo kamang, okay, mag-crawl siya. So, crawling is a, what is a movement, no, that requires strong, Uh, upper body strength and of course the leg strength so infants from a uh, certain stage soon develop the kasi hindi pa man paglabas ng bata hindi man kagad strong ang body niya fragile nga di ba even the skull paglabas yan ganito pero pag naglabas na siya sa ano ng mama mag expand kasi nga ang skull is very very soft the bones are very soft till such time na mag, mag magiging strong enough na siya to crawl And then from crawling comes walking and uh, standing. And standing comes walking and from walking starts to run. Yan siya. So before makareach ng running stage ang, ang, ang child, dapat <clears throat> mamit niya na yung mga physiological requirements niya. Kailangan strong na yung bones to run. Okay? So yan siya. Uh, that's the necessary strength and the necessary flexibility must of course be developed and be ready for a specific skill again readiness in uh, readiness or physiological readiness has something to do with how ready is the body to, to do a certain movement to do a certain movement okay do not expect na mas mauna pa maglundag yung bata kaysa sa magtakbo or maglakad Okay, that is uh, impossible because for you for a for a child to learn how to jump okay the child must learn how to stand first okay and use bouncing movement jerking movement para maka jump mas malakas yung mas maano yung, eff, yung exert ng effort to yun okay so yan siya to make the long story short physiological readiness has something to do with how ready is the body to do certain movement. Second one is psychological. Okay? What is psychological readiness? So psychological readiness refers to the learner's state of mind. Okay? One's feelings or attitudes toward learning a particular skill and the desire and willingness to learn with greatly influence the acquisition of the skill being taught. Okay? So it uh psychological readiness has something to do with the state of mind. Okay? Psych psycho, okay? State of mind. So, um, ano ba yung, ready na ba yung ba, uh, learner natin or yung child no, to engage in a certain uh, movement? Say, for example, ready na in the state of mind na, in the state of mind. So, ano ba yung feeling or yung attitude ng bata na yan towards learning a particular skill? Okay? So, in the desire. Ano, mayroon ba siyang drive ba? Pero it has something to do with the drive and the need has something to do with motivation. I'll explain it to you later. Okay? Now, um, psychological uh, readiness has something to do with um, say for instance, no? Uh, meron bang uh, ready ba yung bata na ito say swimming? Okay. You want really want to 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 your child to learn how to swim for example okay so physically ready na siya say sabi natin kasi ano na siya uh, five years old okay i see people i see children learn learn how to swim at the very young age of two two years old pero yan video no pero sabi na natin lagay natin uh, grade grade two or sa elementary lagay natin sa elementary 12 years old So, 12 years old, grade 6 na yan siya. So, physiologically, ready na yun. Pag titignan mo, physiologically, ready na yung, yung bata to learn how to swim. Okay? But the problem is, <clears throat> is he psychologically ready? So, what is psychological ready? Takot ba siya sa tubig or not? Yan. Kasi, 
even though you're physiologically ready, okay ang ano mo, ang body mo, ready ang body mo. Pero meron kang takot sa tubig, then you are not you are physiologically ready but you are psychologically unprepared, meaning takot ka. So there is really no chance for you to learn how to swim because you are afraid of the water. Right? So yun sa yung basic example natin ng psychological readiness. So psychological readiness is a state of mind, no? The learner state of mind. That attitude of the learner to towards learning a specific skill, a motor skill. So even though physiologically ready yung bata, pero meron siyang takot sa water, then the person cannot learn how to swim. Not unless you push the person tapos mautulog siya sa swimming pool mo kisay kisay kasi instinct siya no pero uh, yun, yun yun yung classic example na yan and then the desire right it has something to do with interest siguro okay uh, interest and willingness to learn yan yung state of uh, psychological readiness natin okay and this psychological readiness is really a great influencer when it comes to learning a specific movement. Kasi kahit na, kahit na, sabihin natin, mabilis kang tumakbo. Okay? Mabilis kang tumakbo. Uh, physiologically, ano talaga, built ka, athletic ka. Kung wala ka naman interest towards sports, na you will not learn how to play sports. Kasi, wala kang interest, no? Your, the uh, level of your, your state of mind is not in the particular skill. Okay? So, mag, very basic lang yung explanation dyan, no? So, psychologic, uh, psychological state of mind. Physiological state of the body. Alright. Next, let's move with the second influence uh, force, no? For second force that influence our uh, way of learning motor skill, which is motivation. Motivation is somewhat, somehow connected with psychological readiness. So, what is motivation? No? Is, uh, motivation is actually a basic factor in learning. So, if you are not motivated, you will not be able to learn. Remember that, no? If you are not motivated, you will not be able to learn. Motivation is based on the needs and the drives. Okay? It refers to an individual's arousal towards a specific action. So, what is needs and drives? Right. Um, need a... a a individual may perform higher or an individual may perform a, a specific motor skill because the individual is motivated to learn the specific skill kasi kailangan niya or need niya. Right? Need niya. O ma-motivate yun kang mag-move kasi need mo na mag-move. Say for instance, gamitin natin yung swimming for example. If you are, if your culture, okay, your culture and your family is located in an area na near water, say, lapit kayo sa dagat, right? And most of, if not all, of your people living in that area are fishermen, okay? And hindi lang sila naganet, no? What they do is they dive deep. To spearfish, ibig sabihin magpitik sila or magpana sila ng ila, sa ilalim ng dagat para makahuli ng isda. And they need to do that because if they if they not if they will not do it, then they'll get hungry and they'll die. So meaning to say, for you to be able to live in that certain community, you have to learn how to swim or else swim or die. Yan yun siya. So, because of that, uh, that scenario, of course, to, whether you like it or you like it very much, it is a need for you to learn how to swim. So, that need becomes then your motivation. You are motivated to learn how to swim because you need it to do to for you to be able to survive. So, again, no, mot that motivation is a factor in which to, that motivation, that need, that motivation is then the factor that will greatly influence you to do or to learn a specific skill. Next is the drive. What is drive? Of course, uh, hindi mo naman siyang need, pero dahil ganahan ka, ganahan, okay? The ganahan, in other, uh, in the layman's term, 
ganahan ka or you are parang kubaga excited ka excitement has something to do with other term niya is drive okay you are happy doing what you do then it drives you to do it okay so ayan siya uh, i know some per people kahit pagod na masyado ang training nila okay but because it what drives them every day what uh, motivates them to do to do to do or to play uh, they always keep on practicing because they are motivated because they are happy okay motivation in that sense becomes then the drive right so again motivation is the arousal no to perform a specific action okay sige so very very concise na yung explanation natin diyan motivation really greatly influence the way you move right reinforcement reinforcement so what is reinforcement okay so reinforcement is using events actions and behaviors to increase the likelihood of a certain response so reinforcement can be positive and negative tangible or intangible so what is reinforcement reinforcement is or uh it, it comes in many types of reinforcement no? pero ang pinaka ano diyan sa, sa education we call that one as either positive or negative reinforcement right so reinforcement is sabi nga dito is using events actions behaviors to increase the likelihood of a certain response para maka-achieve ka ng sabi natin uh, gusto mong manalo ang ang team mo so para manalo yung team mo your team must prepare must play or must mas dapat mas mapakita nila na magaling na magiging magaling yung laro nila okay so they must perform very well so how will they perform well some coaches and trainers use reinforcement what are these reinforcement okay pwede siyang action pwede siyang behavior na para ma-achieve mo yung certain response. An example of it, kung ilalagay natin siya sa educational scheme, uh, tingnan natin yung psychology ng animal. Yung dog, for example. Diba? You are teaching the dog how to sit. Sit! Sit! Right? Sitting is a movement, right? So, pag tinuturuan natin yung aso mag-sit, pag yan, pag, pag, pag yun niya, we give the, per, that dog a treat. Sabihin, binibigyan natin siya ng konting bite size na pagkain. Pa! Tapos, maaganahan ng aso. Oy! Parang, parang, nabibigyan na, ako ng reward every time I do a specific action. The next time you tell the dog, sit! Oo na yon And then the dog is expecting a treat. So, because gusto ng dog yung, yung nangyayari sa kanya every time that the dog do the movement, no? The, the, the way that we give a treat for the dog to do a movement is what we call reinforcement. Right? We are using an action or a behavior para maka, maka come up with a specific response. No? Stimulus and response. Reinforcement. And siya. Now, in the, in the context of, of sports, no? we have what we call, or in movement, we have what we call positive and negative reinforcement. Ano ang positive saka negative reinforcement? Pag sinabi natin positive, meron tayong binibigay. Okay? Meron tayong binibigay para para maging meron tayong binibigay para magiging kaaya-aya yung response ng movement. Ayun, for example, kung makashoot ka ng kung makascore ka ng goal na 10, sabihin mo, no? If 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 you wanted the the player to to goal or to score as many as he or she can uh, you will likely to give positive reinforcement sabihin mong sige pag makascore ka ng 10 bigyan kita rin ng 10 ayan anong 10 ano yon okay kay ikaw na bahala basta meron kang ibibigay na as a reward so yung binigay mo meron kang ina-add that is what we call positive reinforcement okay so ganahan ang bata sabihin mo Bawat goal, 100 pesos. That 100 pesos then becomes the positive reinforcement. Okay? 
Positive reinforcement kasi meron kang binigay. Ngayon, pag sinabi mo namang negative reinforcement, ang negative dito, hindi siya bad, ha? Hindi siya, hindi siya makadistract. Pag sinabi natin negative, kung ang positive is meron kang binigay, ang negative reinforcement is meron kang binawas sa burden niya. Say, for example, um, the training, usually, pag nagjajag kayo, 10 rounds ang ginagawa nyo. Okay? 10 rounds. So, makakapo yun. Pero, sinabi mo, sige, if you perform very well in this training day, we will, no, uh, we, i-minus natin yung, yung jogging ninyo. From 10 rounds, gawin natin 5. Okay? So, ganahan ang mga bata. Ah, yun siya. So, that, the, dahil, dahil doon, is magiging magaling sila, magiging, uh, to this, uh, mas pabubutihan nila yung training nila. So, that negat, the, the thing that, bina, dahil binawasan mo yung kanilang magiging jacking, pag gumawa sila ng positive, or pag gumawa sila ng, ng, what's this, ng mataas na level na performance, dahil nagbawas ka, that is what we call negative reinforcement. Again ha, pag positive, meron kang dagdag na reward. Pag negative, babawasan mo yung kanilang 700 tas para makaperform sila mabuti. Yun siya. Hindi yung negative na ipanish mo. Iba ang punishment sa negative reinforcement. Ang negative reinforcement, meron kang binabawas para mas para ganahan yung mga bata to do a specific task or movement. And this reinforcement then would influence either positive ben or negative would then influence the way they move. Tama ba? Okay. Tangible and intangible. Pag sinabi natin tangible, makita siya. Say, reward. Right? Uh, makita mo yung, yung reinforcement na binibigay mo. Pwede rin siyang intangible. Through verbal. Through verbal. For example, words of encouragement. Yan, reinforcement yan siya. Very good. Yan, reinforcement yan siya. Kasi ganahan siya sa ginagawa niya. Okay? Sige. Lastly, we let's talk about individual differences. Another factor. What is this individual differences? Right? So, kung titignan natin, um, as coaches, no, dapat alam natin na hindi pantay-pantay ang pagkatuto ng bata. Bakit? Kasi, uh, our players or our athletes, our learners, no, in the context of education, in the context of sports, our, our players are different from one another. Okay? Or different from one another. Meron dyan, mabilis matuto. Meron dyan, mabagal. Medyo mabagal. Okay? Now, those, those faces, those faces, yung kanyang, yung kanyang difference would greatly influence the way the, the child, the way the learner, the way the athlete learns. Kasi siya, meron siyang Meron siyang kanya-kanyang strength, may kanya-kanya siyang weakness. Okay? And because of that individual difference, dapat uh, as coaches, ano tayo, um, alert tayo kung alert tayo kung kung ano-ano yung mga differences na yon, ano ba yung mga face, ano ba yung kakayahan at mga kahinaan ng bata natin. Kasi yung mga kahinaan at kalakasan ng mga bata natin is a great influencer no, for a child or an athlete, or a learner, to learn a specific skill. Say, for example, mas, mas, uh, hindi, ma, hindi masyadong makaintindi ang bata through verbal. No, kahit anong explanation mo, magnga lang. Kasi, nga, hindi siya, hindi, mahirapan siya sa word processing. Pero, pag i-demonstrate mo, makopya niya. Na? Demo, pag demonstrate mo, kahit na isang tinginan lang, kaya niya gawin. Pero may na siya sa verbal instruction. Pero pag demonstration, makaya niya. Dapat aware tayo dyan. Okay? Dapat aware tayo dyan. Mayroon din mga ano na ayaw nila na sinisigawan sila. Gusto nila minomotivate. So, dapat, dapat alam natin yun. Right? Kasi yung mga, yung mga differences na yan, yung strength and weakness ng bata, would greatly influence the way the child or the learner moves. Okay? So, yun siya. Alright. So, in individual differences has uh, something to do with personality. Okay? Personality ng, ng tao. Okay? Sige. So, that ends our 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 topic, no? Again, uh, the forces that influence 
uh, the learning of motor skill in a child uh, has something to do with four forces. We have ano yun? readiness, motivation, reinforcement, and individual differences. So, so when we talk about uh, readiness, pwede siya, uh, is the child ready physiologically and psychologically? Is the, ch- is the child or the learner ready sa kanyang body? The body is the body ready and is the mind ready? Motivation is uh, something to do with the dive and the needs, no? So if the child is motivated, then basically, matuto siya ng movement, reinforcement. If we give enough reinforcement, then it would greatly influence the way the the learner moves and lastly individual differences if we are aware of, aware of these differences more or less matututo yung learner natin okay so these are the four factors i hope you learned something from this morning session oh and hopefully uh, if you have questions just comment no in this stream in the in the this the comment section we have here in our stream and if you're watching here via youtube you can you can comment if you have questions you can comment in our comment box okay so have a great day ahead and see you on our next lesson